Hello everyone and thanks for stopping by my channel. I am Serge T and I'm here to talk about Friday Night Smackdown. And of course this is uh, the Smackdown that features night one, day one, however you want to say it, of the WWE Draft 2024. And uh, in this uh, draft, uh, superstars for Raw, Smackdown, and NXT are eligible. Four rounds tonight, six rounds Monday. Champions on each brand are protected. SmackDown picks first tonight. And uh, Raw picks first Monday. And a roster lock will take place Monday, May the 6th. So I guess that means that after that, there's no trading. There's no moving somebody from one you know brand to another. Now... We see Paul Heyman backstage, Caleb Braxton interviewing him, and uh, he says that Roman has removed himself from eligibility, as he will not be returning to WWE in the near future. And this has been said in recent weeks, ever since he left, ever since he lost the uh, Undisputed title. So uh, I don't know what he's doing. He's off doing movies. Is he off just resting, think, you know, spending time with his wife and kids? He deserves it. He's worked hard for it. Why not? Now, Jackie Redman is with the NXT superstars, hoping to be drafted. And it isn't NXT for now. Let's add another letter and ask who's next. Uh, now, up next is a contract signing for the upcoming match for the WWE Undisputed championship WWE championship at backlash the champion Cody Rhodes versus AJ Styles now AJ's out first and the champ makes his entrance and he gets the usual ring entrance which I have never had an issue with uh, you know I feel it's already reached iconic status you know this is going to be one of those entrances one of those theme songs that everybody's going to look back fondly on some people can't stand it some people have been you know fed up with it I'm not it's something that you have to do. You know, I understand. I don't understand why people always want to grasp onto something like that. And I go, what do you expect him to do? You want to say that he has no uh, character or no personality like his father, and he's trying to do this, and he has a lot of personality doing this, charisma. He's not Dusty Rhodes, like I've said before in my videos. He's not Dusty Rhodes. Nobody's Dusty Rhodes. So stop making the comparison. Now. AJ comes out and he says it's two Georgia boys mixing it up for the first time for the biggest uh, for the biggest or the richest uh, prize. He lost to WrestleMania and what happened? He got his composure back and he realized that he is phenomenal and beat LA Knight and became number one contender. Now there is respect from AJ to Cody. You no, know, they haven't yet crossed paths, but have been down similar roads. <clears throat> Japan and all these other places. They had to prove themselves outside WWE and Dusty Rose gave them advice on how to stand on their own two feet and be the men they are today. Now AJ learned a lot from Dusty. He was a good man. He was taught how to carry himself, <clears throat> said AJ, and how to carry the weight of a champion. I look at this right here, WWE Championship, the weight of this is just, you know, it's just isn't leather and gold. And at Backlash, we're going to see if you can carry it. He says that to Cody Rhodes. Now, Cody's response is to say his catchphrase. What do you want to talk about? Like, I'm like, why would you say that? Like, this is serious business. He just ran your ass down. Said that you can't carry the damn title. Like, I don't know. But then when he started talking, I'm going, okay. He kind of you know, weaved it in. And at first I'm like, really, Cody? But then he says, let's talk about respect. And AJ gets a lot of it. The locker room, everybody in the industry, right? Last week, he said AJ is the modern day excellence of execution. Now, Brett's a fan, is a favorite of mine, all-time favorite. I can see that he has that level of uh, ability. And he does bring, you know, excellence to the ring. He's not a pushover. He's not somebody who's just going to go in there and just give you a so-so match, even at his age. 
He always lays it out there. Always does. And, you know, he respects the parallel roads that they have traveled, but that backlash, that mutual respect goes by the wayside. So anyhow, they keep saying roads and roads, and it's like, well, he's, he's roads, right? <laughs> yeah. But AJ has been here before, and he thinks that Cody can't carry the weight of that championship. Now, well, good thing the man that trained me is Cody continuing to speak. Not from far from where he is, is seated. He used to tell him all the time, it's not about winning the title, it's about keeping it. And that's what they tell everybody. Everybody is, it's hard, it's easy to be a champion, right? But it's hard to stay champion. Because everybody's on, breathing down your neck, everybody's on your back, everybody's trying to take that title away from you. You gotta fight them off, you know? And Cody respects AJ's familiarity with his last name. But when he put Cody, but when he puts Cody in front of it, on this piece of paper talking about the contract, that means that we have never touched before. That means that backlash it is a level playing field. Which means that no matter how phenomenal you are, that is not a dream match for me. It's a must win. You know, Cody says, AJ. Well, he says, you know, Cody says as AJ, to AJ, as AJ uh, extends out his hand, it was a beautiful thing to see you. Finish your story. Oh. You know, Cody, says AJ, as Cody extends out his hand, it was a beautiful thing to see you finish your story and get your championship, but it's a shame that your title reign is going to end at Backlash. You get a booze, you get all that stuff, you know. Styles shakes Cody's hand, and they trade some words, and Styles then gets out of the ring, and Cody's music plays at this, out the segment, and no physicality, which is surprising, because you know how, you know, it goes, but I think that's because that was Big Man, you know, that was VKM. And Triple H ain't gonna play that. He's gonna be like, you know what? Just just make it normal. Let's not let's not put in that hole. Yeah, these guys gotta fight, and then someone gets get thrown through or push, you know, put through a table. You know. Now, as Cody's going up the rampway, Co uh, Paul Levesque, uh, you know, H to the triples. <laughs> Music hits, and he shakes Cody's hand, and both men man the desk at on the stage and are about to start the first round of night one of the draft. So Cody gets to read the SmackDown picks and Triple H the Raw picks. Now SmackDown round one picks are the first pick is the EST of WWE Bianca Belair. And the second pick and third overall is Carmelo Hayes is a SmackDown. Now Raw's first picks are First pick, second overall for Raw is main event Jay Uso. And the final pick for the first round, the fourth fourth overall is Raw. For Raw is uh, sex, Seth freaking Rollins. I said sex, sorry, sorry about that. Now, Carmella Hayes comes out and says when they say who's next up, who's the hottest out, they don't have, they don't call him the hottest out to call him, they have to call him uh, Carmelo Hayes. And Cody has whooped that trick uh, chance ring out in Pittsburgh. It's funny. It, 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 um, it, you know, that's, of course, uh, his former opponent, his former foe, that being uh, Trick Williams. And Hayes responds, you know, I already did. He, he did beat him. Um, now, ever since you won that championship, I'm hearing you've been saying a lot about if you come for the king, you best not miss. And that's funny how that works, because one thing about me is when I shoot, I don't miss. That's a very familiar, if you're familiar with Carmelo Hayes as I am, that's his uh, catchphrase, that's what he always says. And he, he hasn't missed, uh, he, well, he, he didn't miss twice when it came to the title, becoming the NXT champion. You know. Now, 
he continues on as a first round draft pick I can't think of a better way to shoot my shot on Smackdown than shoot it against you now Cody says fortune certainly favors the bull says Cody I don't know you folks don't want to see me in action do you you know kind of be sarcastic because the crowd erupts positively they definitely want to see Cody I want to see Cody in the action why not I don't know says Cody maybe he forgot his gear oh that's right I didn't forget my gear and this right here as Cody points to the championship for me means absolutely 100% you're on now Cody extends his hand out and Carmelo shakes his hand so we see, we see a lot of civil exchanges with Cody and extending his hand out to shake people's hands and then they kind of they reciprocate where sometimes people just go like this or they'll just walk out the ring but you see his most bitter, you know, his rival right now, his rival right now with AJ. And then you see an up-and-coming person when one day is going to challenge him for the championship. And as Carmelo Hayes, and shaking his hand. Right. Now, up next is the LWO and Legado as their feud uh, continues. Hmm. Really, but we see a tag match with Dragon Lee and Ray versus Berto and Angel. It's like... Mm. Is this going to keep going on? And I like how Graves says, these two factions can't stand one another. And then I'm like, well, for, for you know, I for one can't stand this view. Like, it's already run its course. And also, once this feud is over, who will these factions fight next? Perhaps this is the only logical creative is available to them? And that's not good. A 619 just ends the match. It's followed by a Project Dragon by Dragon Lee for the pin. And Dragon Lee gets the victory for LWO. Now Santos comes out and says that he has many things, but a liar he's not. And when he said he didn't attack Dragon Lee the evening before WrestleMania 40, he meant it. Now, Electra has been working for weeks to track down the security footage from that evening. And Ray, well, he says, Ray, well, Ray, what you're about to see, this is Santos speaking, uh, you're not, you're going to find very, very interesting. Now, the footage shows that Carlito is the one that attacked Dragon Lee. And are we surprised? Not me. And then Carlito acts like he's in shock, right? And he beats down Lee and Ray, and he still looks shocked. And then he runs out of the ring into the crowd, still looking shocked. Like, Carlito, it's done already. You can, be, you can act shocked initially, but then it's like you're still looking like you're shocked as you're do, doing the heel things that I don't know if he's going to be a part of Legado now or if he's going to be on his own or this is his last run and he's going to be gone now. I don't know. I don't know how, how long he ran. He, he, what do you call it for, right? don't know how long he signed up for. How long did he sign up for? Carlito in WWE. Now this is a side note. And this is where TK can take pointers from WWE. All right. It was just announced, right? And confirmed that Cody will face Haynes in the ring for a match. Unlike a match getting confirmed seconds after an impromptu challenge like AEW does. This was like, what, 20 minutes later? And it was confirmed where, as in AEW, someone, and it's, com it's it comes from nowhere. You know, person challenging someone and then not a few seconds later here's here's uh, Excalibur with the damn graphic and everything this match has been you know very you know what do you call it it's been signed it's been you know Tony Khan has approved it and it's gonna happen later and I'm like going how the hell did you get that graphic up that quick you know so that goes to show that they made that graphic beforehand they can't make it in five seconds and in, in ten seconds after someone makes the announcement. You know that's the one thing. I, like I always say, the the the, the amateurish way that AEW conducts itself sometimes. It's like you have to get with reality that if someone said does that, it's going to take five minutes maybe at the most. How about you go to a match, go to the, a commercial break, come back. The match has been uh, what do you call it? Has been confirmed. I get it. It's prescripted. We know that. But don't show it and make it like it is prescripted. I mean, prescripted. You know, it's it's you know it's um 
scripted and it's um, prior, you know, it's premeditated. I mean, what do you call that word where it's like they, they, they prepare, you know, yeah, of course it is. But there's the thing about like, how about you don't make it look like it's scripted, you know? Don't act like, you know, you got to present it as if it's reality, if it's, if it's real. In reality, someone says, I want to, I want to, um, a match with you. And then it's already approved like a second later, like the graphic. I mean, I'm not I'm talking about like a, a, verbally, yes, Tony Khan could look at that and go, okay, yeah, tell him that, tell him that it's okay. But the fact that the graphic is already up and it's already all prepared the names are there and it's going to be tonight, it says right on the thing. I'm like, that's pretty, you know, kind of like amateur hour, you know. But that's all, that's what I got to say about that. And that, 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 that was, that's what they should do, you know, that's what AEW should do. Take a lesson from WWE when it comes to doing that. Don't make the thing where it's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna ask this guy in a impromptu match. Does Cody expect Carmelo Hayes to challenge him to a match? No. And also, this wasn't a championship eliminator match. It was just a one-on-one -on -one match, and it's gonna gauge whether or not we believe that Carmelo Hayes can hang with Cody. He should be proved that. I'll talk about that later. Huh? That's how you do it too. It's just like, come on, you know? Now, Ron Breaker, he hits the ring and who will, he, who, will, who will he squash next? Hmm. Oh, it's Cedric, yeah, Cedric Alexander. And remember Shante Diodonis and Cedric Alexander at one time, they were gonna be a possible tag team, vignettes and everything like that. It was kind of interesting, but that was next. And then Cedric was next by a spear and Breaker gets the pin. Now, Cedric did get off some chops prior to that and was setting up for what I guess was the neuralizer. I think that's his move, right? When he bounces off, he does that flip off the rope, like he does that forward flip, bounces on, and then he spins around. And as soon as he spins around, Braun Breaker hits that spear beautifully. It was like perfectly timed. And this goes to show that Cedric Alexander is a very good hand, is somebody that, he, that people can work with because he really does sell and he really does help the other person that he's wrestling. I mean, his thing now is that he's going to be a guy who's just going to take L's right now. Hopefully that they don't, they don't, I don't, I don't know, did, 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 uh, Don, Shanti, Shanti Diodonis get, uh, what do you call it, get, um, uh, released? I mean, I read the list and he wasn't on that list, so I don't know. Now, a video package comes up <clears throat> and it's shown of Tiffany Stratton and she is gunning for the women's championship. It's evident by her attacks last week on Bailey and Naomi. And backstage, she approaches Nick Aldis. She claims that because of what she did, she should be up next. But Aldis says that he was close to putting her at the back of the line. But someone convinced him not to. Then Tiffany Stratton... That Tiffany Stratton will face uh, Naomi and the winner faces Bailey at Backlash. Who made that decision, says Tiffany. And Bailey pops in and says, ding dong, that would be me. You know, it's a win-win, says Bailey. If Naomi wins, then she gets the match she was supposed to have. And if Tiffany wins, well, she'll find out what happens when you attack the role model. And, um... Very interesting. I like Tiffany Stratton. I like how they're booking her. And she's going after the title. She's mixing it up with Naomi as well. And we've those matches of her with her and Naomi have been great. Now, the draft continues and Tori Wilson will handle the Raw side. And Michelle McCool will do the honors for SmackDown. Good to see the two ladies. Looking great still. Um, you know. And uh, it's good to see them. Now, the first pick for second round... This goes to SmackDown, and they pick Randy Orton. Now, the second pick of the second round for Raw is Braun Breaker. Maybe that match was the deal breaker. And whoever then Raw saw that and said, hey, we got to get him right away. You know, they locked him in. And the third pick of the second round for SmackDown is Nia Jax. And the fourth pick of the second round for Raw is Liv Morgan. Now, a video package for the Bloodline and their recent actions is shown, and then we see a live feed of Solo arriving. Tama Tonga is there, and KO attacks as Solo is insisting Heyman repeat to Tonga. 
what he said in regards to new members being added and making it hard for those who are drafting the bloodline. They don't know who, who they're going to draft because new guys keep coming up. Now, Bianca Belair is on stage, and at this point, SmackDown is a damn promo-heavy you know, show, ain't it? It's just like constantly just going out there. There weren't many matches on this thing. It was all promo. Of course, we have the draft, but it's just like people were talking too long, and people were, you would think they were done, and they just kept on talking. You know? Now, so far, there have only been two matches, like I said. Legato versus LWO, an abbreviated Braun Baker versus Cedric Alexander match. Now, what does Bianca say? I'll abbreviate it. She and Jade will challenge for the tag titles. And she hopes that Jade will remain on SmackDown and help her dethrone Damage Control. And Damage Control, they come out, and then Jade comes out and evens the odds for Bianca. And as they jaw jack what you know each other and they're, they're just jawing away, KO and Tonga fight from the stage to the ring. Orton comes out and looks to help out KO and takes it to the bloodline. And um, you know that thing's going on, and I I, I like that. You know KO and uh, Orton now teaming up, and they've been teaming up for a while now. Kind of an odd duo, but then so was Randy and uh, Matt Riddle. And I like the dynamic between the two. You can see that there's mutual respect there, and then they really, really have each other's back. And they're going to need to, because going after the uh, bloodline isn't is no joke. Now, I see these two on either side of the war rooms there, you know, where Smara and SmackDown, but Bubba Ray and Devon come out, and they're next to announce the next draft picks. Devon for Raw and Bubba Ray for SmackDown. People were chanting ECW and then they look at each other and Bubba's like almost like say, yeah, I don't I don't I don't I don't I'm not feeling this and then they each get their signature glasses out and I'm like going, There you go, that's Devon, that's Bubba Ray that I that I'm used to. And people were digging it. Now the first pick for the third round for SmackDown is LA Knight. And then you have the second pick of the third round for Raw is Ricochet. And the third pick of the third round for SmackDown is Solo Sokoa, Tama Tonga, and Paul Heyman. You're going to see this another another time too, and I'm like going, why are you... WWE, now let me say the fourth pick of the fourth round for Raw is Sheamus. Okay, that's a good, that's a good draft right there. But it's like, why are you doing that when shouldn't things be shaken up shouldn't like there be like a thing where they they get solo and they draft him to say raw and then Tama Tonga and Paul Heyman stay on SmackDown then you'll be like okay what's gonna what's gonna happen next but I think that they do that the people that drafted that's how it's written that's how it's scripted it's just because they want their you know you want to have the strongest draft pick, and why not get a group? You know, but that doesn't shake shit up. That doesn't make it like, oh my god, the the draft was just boom. It totally just shook the whole entire WWE foundation. Like you can't do that with just drafting from from brand to brand. And it's just like there are some things that kind of you know make it makes it makes it different and makes a change for that brand. And I've seen that in the past, but it's like. I said before, man, it's like you have to trade. It's a trade between brands. It's like, like I said when, when I was talking in the video before, I'm like, you have the NFL. They don't draft from team to team. They trade, right? They draft from college. They draft from CFL back in the day and Arena Football League and all that stuff, even the XFL. That time when the XFL folded after it folded, a lot of the people went to uh, – thing like Tommy Maddox right and Jose Cortez I think that was the name of the kicker that went to the 49ers and it's like that they should have drafted from like indie places like places that let's say they talked and had a meeting with somebody and said you know what we got a draft coming up and I said this before in a video so when you hear your name on the draft man we'll even put a camera in your home so that you guys we can get your reaction 
like that make it something like that i know that's nfl i know that's how it is there maybe you want to be different but then again it's like it's time to shake shit up if triple h is the one in charge now let's move away from what it used to be before make it different unless triple h wants it like this i don't know you know it's better than me i'm not gonna you know criticize triple h but uh that's what that's the thing i have to say about that pretty good uh second round there or what? Not second round, but uh, uh, third round. Now it's Tiffy time. It's about damn time we get a match. After how long in this promo heavy SmackDown that we've seen nothing but promos. And it's like another, another match. Oh, great. I think there's only four matches. Now, Bailey joins ringside as she reserves the match between Naomi and Tiffy Stratton for the number one contendership for the WWE Women's Championship. In the course of the match, Naya attacks Bailey as she's sitting seated um, next to the commentary booth there, or not next to commentary, and she gets taken out. And the match, you know, while well, Naomi comes to her aid, the Bailey's aid, and then she gets taken out by Nia Jax, and the match ends. So did Tiffany win by a DQ, or was it thrown out? Or are we going to see a fatal four-way at Backlash? But Tiffany Stratton, she looks at this as an opportunity. She puts them both into the ring. And I think she did this last time, right? Where she hits that pretty, the prettiest moonsault on uh, Bailey and Naomi. Now, Teddy Long and JBL are up next in the WWE draft. And Teddy's for SmackDown and JBL is for Raw. Now, next week, we're going to see Street Profits as they're backstage. Along with B-Fab. Looking fab. And they're going to get a title shot for the WWE Tag Team Championships against, you know, A-Town Dunn on her. Then we see Karrion Cross and Scarlett talk of random acts of violence. And then they take us further, you know, to the back and it shows AOP battering New Catch Republic. And uh, it was confirmed later on that these, those two teams will have a match next week on SmackDown. And then in his words, he says, no matter where they are drafted, this will continue until they get what they want. Now, this is what I was talking about. Just beat people, beat people up and get into feuds and rivalries. Don't just throw them into a random feud where no buildup, no creative behind it, no booking, like you did with the, the Pride with Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits, B-Fab, you know what I mean? This is how they're supposed to do it. They should attack multiple teams. Then they get a, like next week, they're going to have a match with the New Catch Republic, you know, AOP. And then once you're done with that, go on to another team. You know, keep, you know, you know, doing that. Build up your that aura that you're a badass team. You're a badass faction. The final testament, that seems definite, right? You know, it's, it's a finality to that name, right? The final testament. And all they're doing is just Going through the motions, they get they lose here and there and all the time. It's just like, how are you gonna prove yourself to the WWE universe? How are you gonna prove yourself to the IWC? Like, and not get totally just, you know, reamed in the damn uh, dirt sheets and all that stuff of being a weak team. I don't want that for them. I really do enjoy what they do, but at the same time, how do you can how can you really get behind them when they're always losing? They win here, every, they've won a while a couple times, but it's just like, you know, by that by that time you don't give a fuck. You really don't. Now on with the draft. And the two men, JBL and Teddy, you know, when they announce their names, man, they are received with the quietest and the coldest response. Um, yeah, my sentiment is exactly that's what I said. You know, it's like enough with JBL and Teddy. Well, Teddy Teddy Long is okay. I don't think I've ever had a problem with him, but. Does anyone care about either one of them? Especially JBL, his reputation? I can't stand him. Being a bully, being a blowhard. Every time he talks on commentary or he's like on those uh, kickoff shows or whatever, it's just like, he's just overbearing. And he totally sucked at commentary. I don't think he started off good. Booker T starts off good when he starts off, when he starts, you know, like at the, you know, at the beginning of his commentary thing when he comes back and they go oh, Booker T's gonna be the commentator and then all of a sudden he just starts more and more sounding like a mush mouth 
started start starting just not making sense, saying all these things that you're just like, what the fuck did you just say? And like I've said in the past, I'm sure Vic Joseph's like, the hell you just say, Booker? You know? But JBL, you know, just just give us a little bit. Like, and this is actually, I guess, perfect for him because he's not going to be like, oh my God, you know, he's going to be like, you know, here and there. And then like when he was a manager for Baron Corbin, I'm like, oh God, no. And that didn't last. But the first pick is it starts with Teddy, Teddy, you know, Teddy Long starts it off. And uh, for SmackDown, and it's AJ Styles. That's where, he says, that's where he is right now. So he stays. It seems like a lot of people stayed, man. It's like these people are all safe. And that's another thing, too. Is that, does that make a draft, too, that you draft someone to your brand that you already have on your brand? Wouldn't you want to go after someone else, too, to kind of pad your, your, your roster instead of, like, you know, oh, I'm going to keep this guy. I, I get it. You want to keep the person because he's a strong, you know, you know superstar for your brand. But I just, I just don't know about that. You know, I really don't. And then the second pick for the fourth round for Raw is by J says JBL or JBL like says Raw. Like R A W L. That's how he says it. And it's the Alpha Academy. I'm like enough with the damn group staying together. There's no thing to that. There's no shake up to that. Oh, we just bring them all over. You know, if you want to really push giant Chad Gable, let Chad Gable go over only to, you know, whatever, to Raw. And let those other guys be, like, separated from him. Or he goes to whatever other brand that's opposite of his guys. And then they stay on that one brand. And then Chad Gable can really be on his own and really push for the Intercontinental title. Or in the future, the World Heavyweight title. You know? Or the WWE Undisputed title. You know? And then uh, the final, okay, well, the third pick for SmackDown is Andrade. That's where he is right now, right? Oh, no, he's going from Raw, right? That's true. Maybe they want him with uh, Charlotte. But then again, we still have the brand on the, um, you know, the brand, uh, with the, the draft on, what do you call it? Monday. So probably you're going to see uh, Charlotte put on there on Raw. You never know. I don't know. I don't know if they're planning on putting them together. They're kind of a mismatch, you know. I mean, they're, I guess they're perfect for each other in, in real life as marriage, but on, on air, do they have anything to do with each other? They're both uh, next generation superstars. I think, you know, Charlotte's second generation. I think Andrade is third. So I guess they got that in common, but well, how is that going to translate into a partnership on 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 TV? We've seen what happened with Becky and um, Seth, and that didn't really go over well with a lot of people and stuff, you know, I, I really, I think that's a time when I was, I fell out of wrestling for a while because I have, you know, I have issues that I've had myself, health issues and all that shit. So at that time I wasn't watching. So I really didn't know the, 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 the extent of how bad they were, you know, but, uh, that's that. And then the final pick of the fourth round is Kiana James. And she is ready to show why Kiana James is the 1%. That's what she said when she was being interviewed by, the lovely Jackie Redman. And like I said, ask her a question. She says, how does she feel? And then she ends, and she, she ends it with saying that she's ready to show Raw why she's the 1%. That's her gimmick. She's like a one of those powerful, rich women kind of thing. She knows how to, she knows numbers. She knows how to the wheel and deal and all that stuff. I mean, I saw a little bit of her when I used to watch um, NXT, and I was very intrigued. And I'm not surprised that she's drafted because I've heard a lot of people out there with positive takes on her. So good for her. And then we see HBK kind of show up, and he whispers something into Kiana's ear, and she nods her head, and they give each other a hug. So I think it was probably just a, maybe that's why they didn't put it on air because it's actually real probably it's like real advice and telling her straight up I'm happy for you congratulations make the most of it and make an impact I'm sure that's what he made something he said something to that effect, effect. I'm pretty sure now Nick Aldis is backstage and he announces a triple threat match at Backlash for Bailey's women's WWE women's championship and her opponents are Naomi and Tiffany Stratton I thought mm, Nia Jax was going to be added, but I guess it's because Nia just got drafted. So, 
I think that she'll probably be the next one because I don't think Bailey's going to drop it. An historic, you know, career and making match at WrestleMania, her first time that she's, you know, that it's her only and then she, her one on one with somebody and winning the championship and having her WrestleMania moment. So it's like, I can understand why, you know, they're not going to put Nia in here. Let's let, you know, Bailey won't lose and then she'll be, it'll be Nia. Her and Nia. And when the, what's the next pay per view, right? That's going to be line enough for that encounter if that happens. Now, Teddy Long, he was right there, and Aldis wanted him to announce it. And I think he botched this famous announcing of a tag team match. You're going to go one on one. Well, that's one on one with The Undertaker, but it's like, a, you know, uh, What's his name? Uh, Corey Graves says that. Oh, 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 I thought that uh, Teddy was going to announce you in a tag team match against the Undertaker or something like that. But he laughed oddly, like it was weird. Like he, I think he forgot his line or something. And then he says that the Bloodline will face KO and the Viper in a tag team match next week. That's pretty good. That's gonna be that's gonna be a fun match. And then they're gonna be hosting their first ever edition of the RKO show. Get it? the R from his name and then KO from KO it's like you have to read pretty clever it's like with the rated R you know like an RK bro it goes good with it like RKO RK bro and then we got RKO which has Randy's uh, initials and the name of that um, you know the, what do you call it the three most deadly uh, letters in all professional wrestling right and then you have KO so it's kind of clever and I'm looking forward to it what's KO will probably be most all the talking, and then you'll hear some quips here from uh, Randy Orton. Should be fun. Now, next up is Carmelo Hayes versus the champ, Cody Rhodes. And it was a very, very competitive match. You saw at one point, you saw them both bounce off the rope, and although Carmelo Hayes and Cody... You know, you know, hit the hit the you know hit the mat, but Cody seems to be favoring his arm or shoulder, and you see a, like a Cody cutter, a really ooh just an emphatic Cody cutter, right? And then you see a off the top off the second ropes, and then he, he you know he connects on well he you know he gets uh, Cody in the position and he he does a DDT. Crowds, you know, just totally popped for that. Like, holy crap. Even the, the commentators were like, whoa, you know, like, the hell? That's, you know, like, I don't recall hearing that is this is awesome, but that should have been one of the times where that happened. But in the end, Cody hits crossroads and wins the match as he should. He's a champ. And Carmelo Hayes is going to be fine. He's going to be fine. Now, like I said, it was a competitive match, and these two, you know, they, gel, they really did gel greatly in the ring. I mean, I, I'm looking forward to something else with these guys, you know, with these two. And like I said, Carmelo will be okay. You know, people are going to say, well, he's already, his first night, and he, you know, he got, you know, he got buried. He got, he lost his first match. Don't you guys understand the, the way wrestling is, the way it's written, the way that they set people up and the way they are going to position them for something big in the future you know losing isn't the end of everything it's not the end all be all it's not the definitive uh thing for a person like people are going to lose before they win they're going to fall and stumble before they are able to run hard and run straight for the goal you know what i mean it's like People want people to win all the time, and that's the only way that they're going to be look strong and they're going to look good is that they have to win all the time. Well, what do you do? You think that Cody Rhodes was winning all the time before he became, you know, undisputed champion? No. Before Roman went on his long ass streak as the undisputed champion, do you honestly think that he wasn't accepted and that he was having a hard time getting there? To where he was, where he ended up going. You talk about go away heat. You talk about people not wanting anybody around. And that was Roman until he came back with wreck everyone and leave. You know that shirt that he has. 
that when he came back was that Survivor Series. I believe he tacked what Sheamus. You know. So it's like, look at the situation and don't judge. Don't be so quick to judge. Someone losing, oh, they're a loser. You know, some some do look like losers when they lose. Like it's just they just constantly lose, and then there's whatever. But if someone comes back, like some, you know, he's debuts like Carmelo Hayes, and then he becomes, you know, he he he's he's right there in the spotlight. Everybody accepting him. Everybody's you know vibing with him. They really do like him, and I do. I think he's great. But it's like he loses his first match. I'm not like going down. I'm not following him no more. He sucks. Cause I know, like the astute wrestling fan, they know where this is going. They put him in there that despite if he wins or loses, he's going to look good in the ring. And then people are going to go, I remember that match with Cody. He lost, but man, did he look good. And then one day, they're going to put him back in that position. Maybe a year down the road, Carmelo Hayes might be the one to take the title from Cody at WrestleMania or at Summer, you know, at, you know, at Royal Rumble or something like that. I think Cody's going to have the title until WrestleMania next year. But he's probably going to take on The Rock. And I don't think The Rock's going to win the title. What's that going to benefit him? He's he's won enough titles. He's already established himself, cemented his legacy in WWE and wrestling in general. He doesn't need it. But it's a way to make it a, a headlining that pay-per-view that he takes on The Rock. Challenge, you know, challenged by The Rock and he, Rock, Bobby narrowly wins the match, but Cody looks more strong because he beats The Rock. It's also a way to kind of be like, okay, he lost to Rock. He's the one that got pinned by Rock in a night one of WrestleMania. So this is a way for him to kind of like get some retribution and get some you know, a little bit of payback. And then he gets the win back. And he wins and beats The Rock at WrestleMania. But uh, you'll have his time to shine, you know, uh, Carmelo Hayes, in the future. Just be patient. You'll see that that's going to happen. Now, AJ does come out and motions this close. I believe that's what he's doing. He's like, he's like this. He's like this to um, Cody. Maybe he's saying it's, it's time is near. It's close. We're, we're close to it. Or Carmelo Hayes came this close to beating you. But I don't know if I've seen that, but there are moments where he could have put him away, but I don't think he was close to pinning him. But it looked good. It looked like it. But not really. Hmm. <laughs> And then um, before all is said and done, before the before it goes face to black, he shakes Cody's hand again. And in mutual respect, I get it, you know. And you've seen that, like I said, you've seen that with Carmelo Hayes, and you've seen it with AJ Styles twice with AJ Styles. So it's not like it's one of those typical things where, oh shoot, here we go again. He goes to shake his hand, and then he slaps him, or he goes to shake his hand, and he just moves his hand out of the way, and you know, like that. It was just like, I think that. Uh, Triple H didn't want to have any nonsense of, of the past, especially with the contract signing, and he didn't, he didn't want like all oh, typical guys gonna they're gonna get in it. Someone slams the other person's head into the damn table, and then they they do a thing off the rope. Someone goes ducks underneath, gets a guy, picks him up, and you know power bombs him to the table. That's something that we we just don't want to see anymore. It's so predictable. Maybe once in a while, but not every like there's that time where, and I think that's just how. You know, BKM. I'm just gonna. I'm like I said. I'm not saying his name. He's Baltimore to me. It's like, you know. It's like I think that's what it is with him. Like you know, we all know that's how he is. Where he's just like, oh, this worked last week. I'll do it. Oh, this worked last time. Oh, uh, contract signing. I'll just have him sign, trade some words, and then one of them goes to the table. I don't care who it is. One of them goes to the table. Oh, a fatal fall. Oh, two guys have a problem. Oh, here comes their partners. Let's make it a tag team. Oh, here comes their other. Members of the fa of the faction. Oh, let's make it a triple, you know, a six man tag. How many times that happened? Where six man tags every week, same people every week. You know, that's why I'm glad that Triple H is truly in charge. He really is. This really truly is an, a new era in uh, WWE, and I couldn't be any more happier. I fumbled a little bit earlier <laughs> during uh, my thing, but I'm not perfect. No one's perfect. I was thinking, I'm going to edit that. No, just leave it in. Um, that's, that's that's me. I want to show that, hey, I'm not perfect. I don't pretend to be. Sometimes I'll make mistakes. Sometimes I'll fumble. I, you know, I got my notes. And sometimes my notes, I write them. And I'm like going, I, I forget to read it how I wrote it. It's just weird, right? 
You know? I remember somebody who complained on my comment on a video of mine way way back, and they said, "Hey, I see you're you're reading a, a script. You're not going to be a good actor if you can't memorize your script." I'm like, "Oh, since when am I pretending to be an actor or presenting myself as an actor?" You know. And then you look at people like cultaholic and some of these other people, you know, where they got pieces of paper with their damn notes and their what they're gonna say and they're reading it like this. Also, oh, what do you say about them? <laughs> you know what I mean? Really? Like you're gonna so this guy's gonna complain about me and you got these other guys who are well established, way more popular than me, and got more thousands more subs than me. And they're like reading things. And there's nothing wrong with that because sometimes you got to read your notes because you want to present your show or you present your your video properly. That you don't make sure, you make sure that you don't forget anything. That's what kills me about some people where they go, oh, look at you, you know, like that one person. Like I said, he's all saying, you'll never be an actor because you can't memorize your script. Somebody wrote me. I'm like, I don't remember saying that this is a damn actor's video. Like I'm pretending to do a scene. Like... You know, these are my notes, my notes. I'm not reading someone else's notes. I'm not paste, copying, pasting it from somebody and then acting like it's mine. It's all mine. That's the reason why I want to show that I make mistakes so that you know I'm human and that I sometimes fumble. That's the first time that I've fumbled in, in some time ever since coming back. You know? And, uh, you know, I've been really, uh, you know, I've recently been diagnosed with, I'll say, with diabetes, and uh, it's tough, it's hard. I could come off, I could probably come off as being very sluggish, but I'm trying to get my energy back, trying to get my sugar levels up there and stuff like that. And I know some people out there who watch this video are very familiar with that feeling, and being diagnosed with that. But uh, you know, if if it comes up, if I want, if I talk about it, you know, I will. You know, I'm thinking about vlogging about it because it is quite a, a undertaking, you know, to deal with the situation. But um, you know, I'm a I'm a strong person. People know me. They know I'm they know I'm strong willed. They know I'm a person that can overcome this. I've overcome so much in my life. I almost tapped out a bunch of times. You know, reason why I was out for a year is because I was dealing with a lot of stuff, a lot of health issues. But uh, you know. That's just how life is, and we just have to know how to roll with it, and we know how to we just need to know how to just to just keep moving forward, and doing what you gotta do to just keep your keep it keep it going. What else can I say? But uh, anyway, got a little personal, but uh, hopefully you guys understand. But anyway, uh, that's my video. So for those of you who stopped by and checked it out, appreciate it. Thank you very much. And until next time, take care. And I will see you in my next video.